Um, the enthusiasm that we, uh, we get from the Filipino fans is unlike anywhere else in the world. It's quite unique. Um, and that's why we love coming back here so much, because we are greeted with such warmth and uh, fun. And, I, you know, I think when you have uh, an audience that are all great singers as well, because so many people over here in the Philippines are excellent singers, it's amazing and overwhelming for us to start a song like One More Try. Do you know One More Try? Uh, uh, please give me one more try. And everybody sings it. And it sounds so sweet. It sounds so good. And that's something that's quite unique to this part of the world and coming here to the Philippines. So um, that's what sets the uh, Filipino audiences apart from the rest of the world. Great singing, great enthusiasm, great warmth and fun. And that's why we love coming back here so much. So then the other one was, when did we decide to get back together again? It was a TV show, uh, initially, yeah. uh, that contacted us and said we're doing this uh, show and it was with a lot of other of the big bands of our era, like, uh, who, was, who was that? Five and uh, a bunch of other bands. And they said, would you like to be part of this show? And you weren't part of that show, were you? So you came on after that, but initially then the three of us got back together, yeah. did a bunch of stuff. And then Paul came and joined in when we... The last time you were here was the... Exactly, yeah. 20th anniversary? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 2018. That's right. 2018. Good and then math. we did come back again in 2019, uh, just for a one-off at an uh, arena show playback. But, um, but yeah, this is the first time we're bringing a whole big live show back to the Philippines, so we're very excited with about With a new that. single as well. With a new single. There are a time that... Um, in the first few years in the band, were you pressured to do so, to do a material that people wanted to hear, or the record label is asking you to do? There was a lot of that in, in, in the beginning. Obviously, we were put together uh, in a studio with the same producers and writers who did a lot of the Westlife singles, uh, amongst other loads of things. And the idea was actually for them to write our songs, but we really wanted to write the songs ourselves and um and and that started us on a different path to some of the other bands and we're really proud of that that we've always written the songs obviously we did a cover with take on me like mark said but um uh, we we've we've even had uh, situations where i remember especially for the make it good album uh with caught in the middle on it and songs like that um, we got back in the studio one night and I was listening through one of the mixes, and suddenly the whole middle eight was gone. And I was like, what, ha what happened to the middle eight? And then the producer goes, oh yeah, the record company boss came down last night, listened through, and, and asked to remove it. I said, did you consider asking the songwriters if we wanted to remove it? Uh, we had to put it back in. And so what stuff like that. that? Um, I can't oh, remember what song. <laughs> it was an album track on Make It Good, yeah. I can't remember which one, I but do remember these things that do happen. Yeah. We, yeah. we had situations where um, uh, record labels would insist that we do certain songs and that was often because of certain deals that were done behind the scenes that we were not even privy to at that time. Obviously, which is why now we have so much more control over what we do. We produce all the music that we release. We, we, we write all the music, of course. Uh, we're much more hands-on now, whereas back in the day, behind the scenes, there would be deals going on that, as I mentioned, we had no idea about. So we would be told to sing this song uh, because it's something and something else that has gone on behind the scenes. But we, we were always fairly easy going. We, you know, we did it a little bit begr begrudgingly, but, but we did it anyway. And it wasn't always bad. No, it wasn't always a bad One thing. example of a good, good thing that happens, one of the songs on that album wasn't actually going on the album until the record company boss said, oh, that song has to go on the album. And we're like, really? Okay, so we'll record it, we record it. That was caught in the middle. So we're kind of happy we did it. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle was not initially pushed to be a single. Um, it, was, it was actually uh, an in, it was a, uh, somebody higher up at Sony that pushed for that. Um, and we're so glad that he did. Because it came out, became our biggest radio hit all yeah, over the world. Top one. Top Absolutely. one radio Absolutely. hits. Absolutely. Yeah. That, actually, that even broke the, um, uh, the pop... Um, broke the internet before the internet existed. <laughs> um, that actually hit the, the charts in the US as well, top 25. So Caught in the Middle was a very big song for us.
Also like a rose. Like a rose is one of, of Sibuana's favorites. Absolutely. It is the best written song ever, isn't it? Yes. And also every time. Every time's all right, but like a rose. Wow. Well, we all just sit here, sit back, and you go ahead and sing it. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to start you off. You ready? <laughs> Treat me like a rose. Just you. you. Give me room to hold. You showed my love and love on me. You gave me air so I can breathe. You open doors I close. In a world where anything goes. You give me strength so I stand tall within this battle. You're going to try, you're going to try.